this recording. Right. Um, what's happening, everyone? It's the first side. It's the 10 and 1. Right. Um, okay. Um, the uh, sex match just just uh, concluded. Uh, the match between... Um, oh, hold on. Yeah. Uh, the match between Ireland and... No, sorry. The match between Scotland and uh, New Zealand. Uh I'm sorry, I thought it was Scotland versus UAE, which which would have been really interesting for me to see, uh, especially, you know, given UAE involved. Right, but but that uh, that was a miscalculate, you know, misinformation from my part, and, and I apologize for that. Mm, okay, Scotland versus New Zealand. Uh, pretty much a squash match, because New Zealand was going in all guns blazing, and, uh, you know, they weren't going to take shit from nobody. Well, that's what it seemed like, you know, until, like, you know, maybe the last 25 minutes. Um... You know, you had uh, Tim Saudi, Trent Bolton, you know, you had informed Daniel Vittori, and you had, uh, you know, the part-time, of, uh, okay, of Corey Anderson, and I'm not going to do the Anderson-Anderson bit, right. Um, so, uh, in the end, uh, like, you know, you had two of the openers, I believe, uh, no, you had two of the middle order batsmen because, or maybe one of the openers, because uh, they lost two wickets, you know, pretty much for nothing, no, they lost four wickets for pretty much nothing. So you had some of the uh, middle order batsmen, you know, come in and, and, and do their thing. You had a two fifties from the from the uh, New Zealand side, not from the Scotland side, but but in the end they ended up, you know, getting bowled off one hundred forty two, and I I don't think even forty overs were were bowled yet. But still, uh, they obviously didn't bat out the the fifty overs, and uh, they had enough time for actually uh, New Zealand to come and bat for nine overs. Um, and they did. Uh, they, I believe they were sixty six for two in the end of nine. Right. Uh, let's just put it this way. I mean, New Zealand were gonna win it, or or gonna get bowled out. It's not that you know they were you know they're gonna leave some runs remaining. Uh, New Zealand won the match by three wickets, uh, and that should kind of tell you that you know Scotland actually, like you know, bowled uh, cleverly enough towards the end. I mean, the consistency that comes with like you know experienced teams was not there. Experience, good bowlers and exper- experienced teams that was not there um, but uh, Scotland at patches did bowl well uh, one of the black players who actually got a 50 he bowled pretty well Majid Majid Huck I think his name is yeah the off spinner he bowled pretty well uh, at patches and it's always good to see uh, Daniel Vittori back it's always good to it was good to see that motherfucker back, especially when he like you know when he's dueling off against Bangladesh. Because I, I love to see the the Shaki versus Vittori uh, uh, feuds. Those are nice, right? Um, so in the end, a squash match, and uh, you know, like New Zealand, you know, I believe they 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 got the bonus point and all that. They have the bonus point system here. Um, okay. Um. So all the before Scotland for whoever the next game is. I believe they have a second game at Dunedin. They have another game at at Dunedin, and, uh, and let's see who they face. So, uh, so I think that should be a bit of a closer closer game if they're facing one of the associates of Afghanistan or UAE. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a preview of Bangladesh versus Afghanistan, right? I've read the articles that one that said that Hathura Singh actually uh, lauds uh, Shaki's performance and you know, like you know, it, like you know, uh, you know, applauds you know his, his abilities and all that. And Shaki, the motherfucking man, like, and Crick Info should do a, a better job posting this uh, this shit because you know, uh, a lot of us uh, follow cricket through Crick Info. We don't live in Bangladesh, right? Um. Shakib is apparently the, the, the number one all-rounder in all of cricket at the moment. Or something like that. Like, you know, Teth, ODI, and T20. Hats off to you, Shakib. Hats off. But now, that's an, that's an example of a motherfucker who just, you know, who just, you know, like, you know, keep saying bullshit about him. Keep banning him, motherfuckers. But Shakib is growing to the point where he's getting bigger than the board. Just like, you know, uh, Tendulkar did. He became, and like, like it or not, Tendulkar was, at one point was, was bigger than BCCI. To a point where if Tendulkar said something, the BCCI said something opposite, the people will get, will get behind Tendulkar, not, not behind the BCCI. He had that much popularity and power. 
Shockey is slowly, you know, cre creeping to, you know, to that level, and that's always nice to see. Okay. Um, then there are also reports about them training in uh, in uh, Canberra, and um, it seems Rubel Hussain is the fastest bowl, uh, bowler. What they have said, and Alamin Hussain, Tosky Ahmed are, are are getting good bounce. Tommy McBall is getting that competitive spirit that you know, like you know, he's he's batting with his ego as well. Because once he got out, he said, you know, I challenge you, get me out again. No, no, shut the fuck up, coach. But give me the deliveries. I challenge you, get me out again. I don't want to listen to anything else. Get me out. That was his attitude, and um, apparently uh, he didn't get out after that. You know. Balls kept coming and they just kept going. Right. Uh, interesting thing that was missing there were was the like detail on the spinners. I wanted to see that. And uh, Marshall Mortaza, uh, you know, he also uh, 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 bowled a bit. He tended to be the slowest, but then again, you know, in this time, you will expect him to be the slowest. And Marshall Mortaza. He's that intelligent because that guy can move the ball like an off spinner. That guy can bowl deliveries that'll that'll cut through that'll cut a bath cut a batsman in half, fall outside off stump to a right hand batsman and then just you know cut back in so much it's gonna like uh like you know go just above the leg stump. Yeah, he, he, he has the ability to to bowl uh, uh, those kind of deliveries. So, uh, expect that to be seen. Um, there's not too much seen from Animal Huck as well, the, uh, said about Animal Huck as well, but basically they're taking this match very seriously, especially, you know, from the report. Now, what transpires in the field, we're going to see. We're going to see then. Even Mahmoudullah at a press conference, you know, he had that backup to say that, oh, yeah, w yeah, we, we lost an ODI with them, but we beat him in a T20. Not realizing that T20, a lot of it is by chance. But anyways, whatever flirts they both, you know, whatever gets them on the field in a happy mood and a competitive mood to actually, you know, kick some ass. And yeah, I will be covering that match very closely, uh, very closely tomorrow. And thankfully it's on a Tuesday because cause, uh, cause Wednesday I have, I have no lectures, but still like I got some work, but I can still dedicate some time to actually uh, 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 watching this match, which will possibly finish by five in the morning. It'll start... Tomorrow, at, like you know, in about twenty-four hours, it's gonna start, and it's gonna probably pop finish at five in the morning. And uh, given the four to eight, eight inches of snow predicted in, in the next few hours, we'll see. Uh, we'll see just how empty my day is tomorrow. And you know that'll that'll leave me even even uh, better prepared to actually watch this uh, watch this game. Okay. Um. From Afghanistan standpoint, Afghanistan have you know, they do have something to lose. They do have something because right now with the with the contracting nature of the next World Cup, all the associates have something to lose. So they, now they have to fight tooth and nail to actually win pretty much each and every game to actually make it to the top ten. And I don't know this this whole shit still bugs me. Like the inadequacy of the of the of the hypocrites in BCCI, ECB, and especially BCCI, because you know they got the most money. Uh, BCCI, ECB, and Cricket Australia, you know their inadequacy to actually grow the sport and ending up actually shrinking the sport. Um, their inadequacy. I mean, look, you don't see this in FIFA. You don't see this, see this in the NFL. You don't see this in NBA. Hell, you don't even see this in in MMA. You don't see this in like. What you think the UFC is, is is shrinking? You think the uh you think Bellator is shrinking? Wow. You think the you think the NFL who had the highest rating I think so the like hundred and I think hundred and twenty million viewers within the United States alone? You think they're shrinking? Only in cricket you have this problem. That tells you it's not marketed right, and whoever's mar marketing it, you know, has their head up their ass. But anyways, um, 
tomorrow's match, let's let's see what happens. Obviously, I'm rooting for Bangladesh. And yeah, uh, may the best team win. And if Bangladesh put up a bullshit performance, expect expect a rant from me. Expect a fucking rant from me. And I won't like I'll try my best not to hold back punches. All right, I'm looking forward to constant suggestions. This is the Rear Side signing out. Please do let me know of your opinions and hit like and subscribe. Thanks. Core enhancements enabled.